Hey everyone and welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make this beautiful React register form using a very important library called React Hook Form. I'm going to show you how you can make this beautiful UI and make this complete React form rapidly in React application. So let's take a look at how to do it. As you can see, I'm using Visual Studio Code. Inside this, I'm going to open my empty folder and create a new React project. To create a new React project, you need to open your terminal and just type a command called npx create react app. And this command is going to create a new React app and I'm going to name the React application React Form. That's about you, you can specify any name to this React application. I already have the React application here, so I'm not going to execute this command again. So once I execute this command, I'm going to enter into my project directory. So I'm going to say here CD React Forms and then I'm going to say npm start. So this is going to start this application on port 3000. So you can notice on the left side here, I'm going to start my development server of React application. So once I have my development server, I'm going to close this terminal, open the Explorer tab and let's build this beautiful application. So what I'm going to do is inside this source folder right here, as you know, React application starts with this index.js. I'm going to create a new component inside the source folder. Here I'm going to create a new folder first and say here components. And inside this, I'm going to create my form component. So I'm going to name this file form.js. That's upon you, you can specify any name to this file. Now, once you have this file, let me get it off this default page from this React. As you know, in app.js, you will get all the default code of React application. So let me get rid of this header and get rid of this logo because we are not using it. Now, just out of that, I'm going to import my component, which is form from single quote dot forward slash specify components. And inside that, I have my form component. I'm going to import that form component here. So I'm going to say here form. Let me save this and this is going to import my form component inside this project. So let me just create here a simple react functional component. So I'm going to say here react functional component RFC. When I press enter, this will import the react module as well as it's going to create the export function form. Inside this, I have here a division tag with the form title. Let me save this. So here I'm going to have my form now because I have here app.css link to my app component and inside this app.css, I'm going to put all the styling of this application. So I'm going to just copy and paste my styling inside this app.css. Don't worry, you can download all this code from the link provided in the description. So you just need to copy the style.css file and paste all the code inside app.css. Just save this file, close this app.css, back to the form. And here you need to create JSX. Now, what I have to do is I have to create here the parent component. So I'm going to say here section, which is my parent component for this form. Then I'm going to create here a div with register class. And then I'm going to create here two different columns. So I'm going to say here column one and column two. So I'm going to create here two columns of division tags. And I'm going to specify flex property to this register. As you can see in my app.css to this register, I have here a property called flex. So this form is going to put both this division tag in the same row. You don't have to worry about this app.css because inside this file, I have the basic styling for this form. Let me save these changes. And here I'm going to open column one. And then I'm going to add here h2 heading tag and then specify here sign in the title of this application after that i'm going to add here a span tag and put some text here which is register and enjoy the service i already have styling for all these jsx so i don't have to worry about anything so just start this span tag right down here i'm going to create a form and to this form let me first specify id which is form and then I'm going to specify some classes to it. Classes is going to be flex and flex call and then inside this form here I'm going to create input tags of the type text 
and then I'm going to specify here placeholder which is going to be username save the changes let me copy this paste it just down here and get rid of this username I'm going to specify here password copy and paste the input tag again then I'm going to specify here confirm password duplicate this input tag again and then here I'm going to specify mobile number that's it this is my simple form when I save the changes I'm going to have all these input text boxes just after that right down here I'm going to create a button and to this button I'm going to specify class btn and inside this I'm going to say sign in something like this we are not focusing on styling because in this tutorial we are focusing on the react hook form library so that is why I skip the styling of this form now just after that once I have my button inside the second column right here I'm gonna put the IMG tag and put my image here so get rid of this double quote add here curly braces and as you know inside react you have to import the image so I'm gonna say here import bg IMG from in the single quote I'm gonna specify the image now as you know inside my application right now I don't have any image so let me create a folder here inside this source assets and put my image inside it if you want you can use the image URL as well so I'm going to copy and paste my image inside this asset folder don't worry you can download this image from the project now once I have this image I'm going to import that here so I'm going to say here dot dot forward slash to access the asset folder and then I'm going to specify img1.jpg and then I'm going to specify this image to this source something like this let me save this as you can see I'm going to have the result what I want now this form looks beautiful right but this registration form is right now useless because we don't have any feature to this registration form as you know the form is used to get the data from the user right now I don't have any feature to this form so I can't get any value from it so let's take a look at how we can get values from this input text boxes when we click on this sign in button as well as I'm going to show you how you can validate this input text boxes using a library called react form hook that's upon you if you don't want to use this library you can simply use react use state to get the values from this input text boxes but that will consume more time instead you can use react form hook library to rapidly create a react registration form let me open this library here I'm going to open a new tab and here I'm going to say react form hook I'm going to open this library so you can notice you have to just head on to react hook form dot com currently we are on seventh version this library provide intuitive feature complete API providing a seamless experience to the developer when building forms it's super lightweight it's super easy to understand and using it you're not only going to create a form rapidly you can validate your form very easily so let's take a look at how you can use this library in the react project I'm going to open my terminal open a new bash shell let me clear the screen I'm going to simply say npm iPhone install and then I'm going to specify this library name which is react hook form and when I press enter this command is going to install this library in my project now once I have the latest version of this library let me close this terminal and at the top here I'm going to import this library so I'm going to say here import use form from react hook form so you have to import a function or you can say a hook from this library which is use form this is one of the most important hook inside this library using this hook you can easily create your registration form let me show you here you have to use this use form hook to get the values from your input text boxes so I have to create here a variable constant and in the object you have to destructure values so let me first add here object is equal to use form that's it and then what you have to do is you have to destructure values from this use form hook so I'm going to first destructure register using this use form you will get the register function using this function you can specify and access the value of your input text box then you have handle submit 
which is used to add event handler to your form. Then you have a watch. We will look at how we can use this watch function later. And then we have a property called form state. From this property, I'm going to access errors. Now, if this sentence makes more complication, let me get it off both these properties right from here. And now we just need two functions from this use of, which is register and handle submit. Now, let me show you how we can use this register function. What you have to do is to this input text box, if you want to get the value of this input text box, is inside this input text box, you have to say here curly braces, something like this, and then call here register function like this. And inside this, you have to specify your text box name or you can say the name of your text box so i'm going to specify here name user name that's upon you you can specify here any name to this text box but when you click on the submit button you will get this name as a object property let me show you that so just specify the name for your input text box and make sure you add here spread operator like this so this is a simple syntax of this register function let me do the same for all these input text boxes. So to this password, I'm going to add curly braces, spread operator, register, and inside this function, I'm going to pass single code or double code, and then specify the input text box name. I'm going to do the same here as well. So I'm going to call here register with spread operator, and then here confirm pwd, the confirm password name. Then I'm going to pass curly braces, triple dots, register, and then I'm going to register here input text box, which is for mobile number. That's it. Now, whenever you specify any value inside this input text box, it's going to store inside an object with a property called username, password, confirm PWD and mobile. Now, just for that, once you get access to all your input text boxes, you have to create on click event. As you know, you create on click event on this form. So when you click on the form, I have to execute the on click event. So I'm going to say here on submit. I'm going to call here an event on submit. And then to this on submit, we have to specify this handler submit function, this one, handle submit. And to this handle submit, if you want to get the values of these input text boxes, you have to pass here a function, a callback function. This callback function is used to get the value of these input text boxes. So let's suppose if I create here a simple callback function. So I'm going to say here constant on submit is equal to and then I'm going to call here a parameter data. And if I print that data in the console and if I pass this on submit to this handle submit right here in the parenthesis, something like this, then when I click on the submit button, I'm going to get all the value of this input text boxes inside this on submit and then I'm going to print that in the console. That's super easy, right? Now, let me save these changes back to my project and let me open the console. You can notice the application is completely responsive. Let me get rid of all these warnings, something like this. Now, let me specify values here. So if I specify username daily, password is going to be admin123 admin one two three and then i'm going to specify mobile number so i'm going to specify something here something like this and if i click on the sign in as you can see i can easily get the values from this input text boxes inside this object here you can notice we have the properties of this input text boxes name we specify here username that is why this is going to create an object with the property called username if you change this to name and when you click on the button again you can see here I'm going to get here a property called name with the value daily. That's super easy, right? Now let me change this to username. Let me click on the sign in again. So here I'm going to have all these values. Now, as you can see how easy it is to get the values from this input text boxes. So now when the user click on this button, we have to just pass this object to the post API request. So we can easily store these values in the database. Now, once you understand this, let me show you what is the use of watch function? If you destructure the watch function from this use form, then let me show you what is the use of this function. So if I say here console.log and call here watch function with the parameter 
if I call this a username and paste that here, let me save these changes back to my project, then right now it's undefined. But when I specify values inside it, you can see you're going to get the value of this input text box inside your console. So if you want to monitor your input text boxes, you can easily use this watch function. You can use this watch function for validation as well. So that's upon you. You can use this watch function in different ways. Now, just for that, as I said, we also have here a property form state. And in this property, you have errors. You can access errors of this form using this error property. Let me show you the use of this error property. What if you have error inside these input text boxes? Or suppose you want to validate all these input text boxes. So for example, let's say I want to validate this last input text box. I can just simply validate this using this register function. So what I have to do is we pass here the name for this input text box as a first argument. You also have the second argument to this register function to validate this input text box. So here you can easily pass second argument by specifying here a comma and pass an object. Inside this object, you have the validation rules. You can see we have different validation rules here. If you want to know more about validation rules, you can head on to this React hook library and check out the different validation rules. Just for now, require this input text box. So I'm going to just say here, require is going to be true. That's it. Let me save this. And now let me clean this console and let me pass values here. And if I leave this input text box as it is and click on this sign in button, I'm not going to get anything here inside my console because now this data is not going to return anything. The form will not execute because we have the required property here to this mobile number. Now what I want, I want to print the error message if the input text box value is empty. So I can just simply add here curly braces, something like this, and I can access this error property. I can say here errors dot mobile, the name of this input text box, if the type of it is equal to required, and if it returns false, then I'm going to execute this message, which is a mobile number is required. Now let me save this. As you can see, when I save the changes, I'm going to have here a message mobile number is required. You can put this message inside any JSX element. That's about you. I'm going to just check that the type of this mobile if it is required and if it is not equal to true, then execute this mobile number required message. So this is now return false. That is why I'm going to have this value in the terminal. If I add anything here, you can see the message will completely disappear. Now, just for that, I can validate the max length of this mobile number as well. So I can just simply add here a comma to this required here and add another property here, which is max length. You can also add minimum length here and the max length of this number is 10. So I'm going to pass here 10. And for this max length, I can also add an error message. So I'm going to copy and paste the same syntax here. And this time the type of the error is max length. So I'm going to replace this required with this max length. And I'm going to change this error message as well, which is max length exit. Right now you can notice I'm only going to have this first error because we have empty text box. Now if I add something here and if the number is more than 10, I'm going to have the error message, which is max length exit. That's upon you. You can specify any error message inside this curly braces. So I hope you understand the basic overview of React form hook library. If you want me to create a backend for this registration form, then let me know in the comment section. If you find anything useful, make sure to press the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe for more latest videos. That is all for now. I will see you in the next one.